And so uh, today we're going to talk uh, about a few things that relate to uh, hematopoiesis, hematopoietic stem cell niche, and how that might relate to aging. Um, I'll cover a little bit about introduction, about stem cells, how we're using hematopoietic stem cells today, um, a new technology we've developed at Stanford that may be a better way to enable transplantation that applies across the field of stem cell transplantation. Also, um, some new work we just published uh, in Nature about the stem cell niche and how to generate that and understand it. And if we have some time of, about uh, a new device, a better way to actually harvest stem cells. So, just I know this is a broad audience, so a brief definition, because I think the word stem cells is often bandied about uh, pretty liberally. Um, when you look at the literature, asked, is this really a stem cell therapy? And the criteria for stem cells, again, are that Number one, that they are unspecialized, that they have the property of self-renewal, they can regenerate themselves, and under the right conditions can go on through progenitors to differentiate into mature tissue types. So we really have to have those qualities to be a, a true stem cell, and obviously there are different types of stem cells, from pluripotent embryonic stem cells to adult stem cells. Um, we've heard it this morning about induced pluripotent stem cells and embryonic stem cells that have the ability to turn into every tissue. However, in the clinical world, I mean, to date, um, most all, the only therapies that are at least approved are with adult stem cells. In my clinical field, I'm a bone marrow transplant physician. Um, what we've been using for over 40 years as a form of stem cell therapy is hematopoietic or blood-forming stem cells in the field of bone marrow transplantation. And there are other adult stem cells in various tissues from neural, um, myocardial stem cells, hematopoietic, and, and others. So, um, briefly, uh, at Stanford, uh, was the first place where the first adult stem cell was fully characterized by uh, my research mentor, Irv Weissman, hematopoietic stem cell. And so briefly, um, these are very rare cells that are in the bone marrow. They're less than, uh, very less, less than 1% of the cells that you'll find. And they have the ability to, to differentiate a single hematopoietic stem cell into any of the mature blood lineages, T cells, B cells, granulocytes, platelets, and red cells. And so these are uh, you know, essential for the maintenance of your, your blood forming and your immune system. And these cells, live within the bone marrow environment or the niche or home of these cells. Um, we can sort of look at it as uh, the stem cells coming from the root of a tree and you differentiate through a variety of progenitors to make these mature um, cell types. Now this all, all happens in the context of what we call the stem cell niche. That stem cell, any stem cell, lives in a different environment, sort of the soil or niche environment. And that will control essentially which pathway you might go down to, what, what factors are involved to make more B cells or what make more red cells, both structurally and um, through factors, etc. cetera. Um, and that plays a role in, in the field of, of clinical transplantation. Today we do uh, hematopoietic or blood bone marrow transplants essentially primarily for malignancies like leukemia and lymphoma. Uh, increasingly we're starting to do transplants for non-malignant diseases, genetic disorders, some autoimmune diseases even, including diabetes. Uh, and, um, and several anemias. Essentially what's involved is taking uh, uh, blood-forming stem cells from the donor niche, from the bone marrow, for either from directly from the bone marrow or for a mobilized book for blood, and infusing those into the um, recipient. And actually the quality of the blood-forming stem cells enables those to circulate through the patient and home to the bone marrow niche. There's several factors that, that enable that. And so both the donor stem cell and the recipient bone marrow niche are, are critical for that step. So I mentioned there are more applications for transplant beyond malignancies, and some of those are uh, immunodeficiency, sickle cell disease, thalassemia, aplastic anemia, that come from defects in the hematopoietic stem cell. If we can uh, replace, uh, for example, a child who has sickle cell anemia, uh, a, a malfunctioning stem cell because it has a gene for sickle cell, with a normal uh, stem cell, we can potentially correct that. And in the setting of, of, of this conference, in terms of aging and longevity, potentially replacing uh, uh, older or less healthy hematopoietic stem cells with uh, newer ones or those that contain genes to promote longevity or fight cancer might be a future application. So one of the challenges we have with, with transplant is it's, it has a high level of morbidity and, and, and part of that is because we have to condition, uh, in order to get these stem cells into the patient, um, we need to usually treat the patient with uh, chemotherapy and often radiation which has uh, some degree of toxicity. We need to, quote unquote, open up that niche space. There needs to be room in the bone marrow for the donor cells to engraft. And normally that's done with chemotherapy and radiation. If we did not use anything, if we just give cells alone, as was published in our lab by uh, Dita Bhattacharya and Irv Weissman, um, only about 1% of the cells in a graft. You can give tens of thousands of stem cells, but the, there's no opening in the bone marrow niche environment. 
to enable those cells to, to take root. So that's why we traditionally use, again, chemotherapy and radiation. Um, we were interested in a better way to enable that, um, both for blood stem cell transplantation and potentially for other stem cell transplants, by using a different approach. That would be, instead of using making room in the bone marrow with uh, chemo radiation, to actually use an antibody-based approach to target the stem cells, make room in the niche, and enable a transplant process. So if we look at uh, what targets there might be on hematopoietic uh, stem cells, uh, mouse and man are relatively simple, they're similar. They both have a molecule in the sugar is called C-kit, and that molecule is highly expressed on hematopoietic stem cells. And we decided to look for targets that might uh, target that antibody that, that surface marker and enable us to remove stem cells from the environment. Uh, it turned out that we had in the lab an antibody made by um, uh, uh, Nishikawa in the early 90s called ACK2, anti-C-kit antibody. And while there are other antibodies to C-kit, this antibody had the characteristic of being able to bind to the um, C-kit receptor and also seems to uh, deplete them or, or um, induce apoptosis and cell death when it binds to the C-kit receptor. Um, if we looked, if we gave a single shot of this antibody to a mouse, we looked at, well, we looked in a bone marrow, a normal mouse, you'd find about four to 5,000 hematopoietic stem cells in the in a limb, let's say in the, in the femur of a, of a mouse. If we gave an injection of this antibody, and we waited a couple days, uh, by day nine, and almost none of these hematopoietic stem cells left, by day 16, they start to come back, and by three weeks, the uh, marrow has, has recovered. Essentially, this looks almost well, like what would happen if you gave radiation. We took the marrow from a control mouse or a mouse that had been injected uh, and took the bone marrow and transplanted that to another mouse that had been irradiated, you would see very little engraftment in the mouse that had been treated with ACK2, indicating that there were very few of these stem cells left. So indicating that this antibody could transiently deplete hematopoietic stem cells in vivo with a single injection. Um, and the next step was to ask, because we could sort of recapitulate what would happen with chemotherapy and radiation, um, would this enable us to engraft or transplant this recipient? So this graph summarizes the fact that if the round circles here, if we transplant an animal without any radiation or chemotherapy, only see about 1% donor-derived cells. However, if we gave a single injection of this ACK2 antibody, we waited uh, three or four days for it to clear, and then did a transplant with uh, 5,000 purified hematopoietic stem cells, we'd get about uh, 15 to 20% uh, donor-derived engraftment indicating we could open up the stem cell niche and replace those with the donor uh, stem cells. Um, and the way we could measure that would be looking in the bone marrow itself to look for the donor cells, uh, or more simply look in the peripheral blood to see what are the circulating granulocytes, the white cells, were derived from the donor uh, uh, animal. And if we increase the numbers of the donor stem cells from 500 as an initial experiment up to 35,000, which is a lot of hematopoietic stem cells, we could pretty reliably get uh, close to 80% donor-derived chimerism. In most of those diseases, for let's say in children with thalassemia and sickle cell, if you get above 10 or 20% engraftment, you can pretty much uh, cure the disease uh, in a clinical setting. So this would give us uh, some hope that this may be a, a translatable application. Similarly, we could do serial transplants. We could do a single injection of the ACK2 antibody, do a transplant with one set of stem cells, then wait a couple weeks, do a second transplant, with a slightly different phenotype, and a third, and layer that approach, uh, and, and with three separate transplants, very easily get to 80% or higher donor-derived engraftment. So again, a very gentle uh, means of doing a transplant with an antibody alone. Um, and the, the, the hope here is that uh, as we now approach uh, trying to translate this into humans, um, number one, we have an antibody means to remove stem cells from the stem cell niche, um, and that can enable transplantation without chemo or radiation. And um, potentially, if we wanted to use this in other stem cell settings to uh, remove um, aged or diseased or uh, essentially normal stem cells and replace those with healthy ones or those that might be modified to contain uh, genes uh, to uh, enhance longevity or to fight uh, HIV, for example, may be another means of doing that in the future. And if you want more, we just published this in Science uh, about a year ago. Um, and again, has applications to, uh, to longevity and, and uh, a gentler way to do transplantation. So changing gears now, we now learned about a way to improve stem cell transplantation, potentially with an antibody-based approach. But what about the, the stem cell niche itself? How can we understand that environment better um, to both understand disease and to improve uh, potential therapies? So the stem cell niche itself is quite complex. Uh, it contains uh, 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 blood vessels, 
of stromal cells. If this is the stem cell